All right, now we're going to rules of derivative. Now I'm going to give an example with dealing with fractions or rational that has more than one term at the bottom in the denominator. Say, for example, you are given x to the power of 2, and then you say plus 5x, and then you go plus the 6. And then at the bottom, we divide that by, let's say we divide it by x plus the 2. Now here, you've got two terms, yes. Let's say as long it's more than one term. Whenever it's more than one term, it means you must factorize the top in such a way it will cancel the bottom. All of the bottom will be gone. So that means you already know one of the factors at the top. It must be the one that is at the bottom in order for it to cancel. Every time it works like that. So now you, can, you don't split it like how we did like, like here. You, you, you individualize them. No. So it becomes y equals to, you open the bracket. It will be x here. And the other part is going to be x. I'm telling you, no matter what, that x plus 2 must be there. So I wanted the factors of 6 is 2 and 3. Can you see that? So it will be x plus 3. I believe you guys, you already know how to factorize. And then at the bottom, I now have x plus 2. That will cancel with that. So that means the equation should have been x plus 3. Then I derive it dy all over dx, which is going to be just the number in front of the x is an invisible one. The number will just be 1. There we go. All right. What if uh, you have y equals to, I'm doing this on purpose because I know it's x to the 3, 1, 3, 3, and then 3x squared, and then plus 3x, and then plus the 1, and then all over at the bottom, it's x plus 1. It's more than one term. I can factorize the top. So you just need to go back and recap how you factorize the cubic from the that 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 is that is calculus. Ne? Mm -hmm. So one of the factors you already know it's x plus one. So I've got a way of remembering myself. I always say this x, this one, the yellow one, the one that is one of the factors. I take that x. I put it under the first x, the x which is cubed. It's x cubed divided by that. It gives me the x squared, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So I need x squared here. Then I take the, the one including the sign, this one here. I put it under the last one, meaning 1 divided by 1. So it gives me plus 1, the last term here. Now to get the middle term, all I need to do, I look for the x that has the power of 2, which is this one. 3x squared. So I write it as 3x squared. You say minus. Watch now. These two which are close to each other, the neighbors, you multiply them. You minus them. Ne? X squared. So you left now with just 2x squared. But when you put it here, you write it as plus 2 without the squared because you already have the squared there. So you've already factorized that. All right, or you can just use synthetic division. We good, right? Mm -hmm. All right, all over. But the thing is, whenever it's more than one term, the bottom has given itself away. That I'm one of the factors right at the top. All right, so it's x plus 1, and then that cancels that. Then your equation, it's now y equals to x squared plus the 2x plus the 1, now we can give them the derivative dy all over dx equals to, it will be 2x plus the 2. 
that concludes the deal with this. Remember? So we can also work with this type using square roots and cube roots. But if there's a square root and a cube root, you'll be able to factorize it. Are we happy with that one? Yes. All right. So there we go.